What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Big Dollars Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. It's your boy Nick. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. We'll be coming at you all summer with good fantasy football information. I know what you're probably wondering right now, those mustaches on your shirt. Indeed. And now you're probably wondering, where do I get that? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. It was like $12 at Marshall's. Steel. I was yet to wear it. I was figuring when is the right opportunity? Is there ever a right opportunity to wear a shirt with mustaches? Then I said to myself, is there ever a wrong opportunity to wear a shirt with mustaches? So I'm whipping it out for you guys because I love y'all. Enough about stashes. We're getting into my top three sleepers at the running back position. Now, I guess these aren't my top three, but they are guys going later in the draft, guys that I haven't really covered yet this offseason, but I really, really, really love them right now, where they're going, where their values are. I've done the QB position, I've done the wide receiver position. If you've missed any of those, I'll link them in the description as well as link them up here somewhere. So you can go check that out on my channel. And it's gonna be a good one. Got a lot of information, three dudes that I love that are going outside of the top 80 picks. It's Friday, New Music Friday's bumping. If you need a playlist, for summer, Darty Marg playlist. Go follow me on Spotify. Just use my name, Nick Ercolano, and follow my Darty Marg season playlist. Great for day parties, great for jamming, all that good stuff. Go follow it. But that's enough of that. Let's get into some numbers, baby. Let's get into fantasy football because that's why y'all are here. All right, so number one on my list, and this is going by ADP order, the earliest drafted to the latest, Danny Woodhead. ADP right now is at 83, running back 30 off the board. He's a longtime Charger, moved over to the Ravens this offseason. So he goes from coast to coast, now with Jim Harbaugh, and he joins a backfield that is comprised of Terrence West, Kenneth Dixon. Kenneth Dixon's obviously missing the first four games of the season for PED violation. Terrence West is the, is the runner there, the early down back. Now, Woodhead um, tore his ACL early into the season last year in September, completely recovered. He's at 100% now participating in their mini camp, participating, um, you know, slowly being brought along, but he'll be 100% for training camp. So the injury is not a concern there for 2017. So cutting to the chase, Danny Woodhead obviously makes his fantasy money for his owners on passing downs and near the goal line, near the end zone. Jim Harbaugh's come out and already said he's gonna be a really big part of our passing game. He said, we, we've been missing this dimension of our game since Ray Rice left us. Exactly how good was Ray Rice? in the passing game, or just for the Ravens overall when he was playing. Rice took over as a starter in 2009. Over the next five seasons, these are his numbers in receiving. He averaged 89 targets and 67 receptions in every single season. His reception low was 58 for a year. Now, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I'm willing to bet a substantial amount of money that there's no running back over that five-year period that came close to those numbers. 67 catches a season, 89 targets. Like, let's go. That's a lot of opportunity in that offense. And Jim Harbaugh is coming out and saying that Danny Woodhead fits that slot. So, like, does the opportunity exist there for Woodhead to, to get those numbers? I say absolutely. So the Ravens led the NFL in pass attempts in 2016 and 2015. It was 679 last year, 676 the year before that. The Ravens have the most unaccounted targets for going into 2017 out of any team in the NFL. 345 targets left their team between Dennis Pitta, who led all tight ends and targets, which or receptions, which is wild to me when I looked that up. Dennis Pitta, Steve Smith Jr. is gone, Kamar Aiken, Kyle Juszczyk, among other guys. And now you have Kenneth Dixon also serving that four game span to kick off the season. So there's a glaring hole in that department, in the passing game, in the receiving game, especially for running backs. So this is per Evan Silva, Roto World. This is him quoted. Most notably gone are tight end Dennis Pitta and fullback Kyle Juszczyk, who vacated 123 combined receptions in high percentage dump off rolls for which Woodhead is now ticketed. 123 uh, targets in those in those dump off rolls. So Woodhead already has multiple 75 catch seasons under his belt. He's well equipped to handle the workload, obviously. And what's most intriguing is over the last two seasons, the Ravens ranked second in the NFL in pass attempts to their running backs. Now, Kenneth Dixon was really the only guy there that could catch the ball outside of Woodhead. And he has that four game suspension. Kyle Ushek's obviously gone. So Woodhead's basically the only guy that's gonna be catching balls out of the backfield. Terrence West is not, that's not what he's made for. So we start looking at the goal line opportunities, right? I said he's a good pass catcher and he's good near the near the end zone. This is when things started to get juicy. So last year, Kenneth Dixon, Terrence West, and Kyle Ushek combined for six targets 
inside the opponent's 10 yard line. That's not six touchdowns, it's not six catches, it's six targets. For a team that was second in the NFL, well, first of all, most pass attempts in the entire NFL, second in the NFL in pass attempts to the running backs, that's an extremely low number, and that's definitely an anomaly. So when you look back to 2015, Kyle Juszczyk had seven targets in that area by himself. So now again, Dixon's gone, Kyle Juszczyk's gone, well, Dixon's gone for four games, Woodhead's getting every single one of those targets inside the 10-yard line at the running back position, at least for the first four weeks, at least for the September. And Woodhead's a, Woodhead's a good runner, too, down there. In 2015, Woodhead saw um, over 71% of the Chargers carries inside the five-yard line. So obviously they know he could run it well down there. So if they don't want to go with Terrence West, if you know if Woodhead's leading down a two-minute charge, if, if it's third down back and they're looking to move quick and they happen to be in the goal line area, Woodhead's going to get those carries as well as the dump-offs. Now, West last year, he was the bigger back, right? He was supposed to get a lot of those carries. He only had seven attempts inside that area of the field, tied for 22nd among running backs in the NFL. So, say what you want, opportunity for Woodhead. Maybe they don't like West as much, but there is a huge opening there. Now, the injury concern is obviously there. He played a total of five games in the 2015 and the 2013 season, two big injuries there. But it's worth noting that 2012, 2013, and 20, oh, I, sorry, I messed that up. 2016 and 2014, he combined for five games. 2012, 2013, 2015, all 16 games played. He is gonna be uh, 32 this year, so there's, there's risk there in terms of age, in terms of injury. But in those three seasons that he was fully healthy, um, he was RB23 in 2012, RB12 in 2013, and RB3 in 2015 in PPR leagues. So his upside is, as, if you think he's gonna stay healthy, then he's a no-brainer pick here. So the former Charger running back, Danny Woodhead, is locked in as the pass-catching role in one of the highest volume, the highest volume passing offense in the league, who passes to the running backs a ton, lost a ton of targets, lost a ton of those dump-off passes. So those first four weeks of the season when Kenneth Dixon's gone, Woodhead is a high-end RB2, plug and, plug and forget about it. In my opinion, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like two out of those four weeks he puts up RB1 numbers. And then when Dixon returns, I still think he's an RB2. It's, in PPR leagues, he's an RB2. Uh, standard league's probably an RB3, but regardless, his value is crazy at RB30 right now. So I like him in every every league format everywhere. There's just so much upside and so much opportunity there for him. So, Danny Woodhead, moving over to the Patriots, we got your boy Mike Gillisley. Currently 98th overall off the board, running back 34. The upside is pretty obvious, which is kind of weird considering nothing in the Patriots offense is ever obvious, except for the fact that they're gonna roll. Like Lieutenant Dan, I'm rolling. They're gonna roll like Lieutenant Dan. They signed Gillisley over from their uh, division rivals, the Bills, two years, $6.4 million. Gillisley's 5'11", 220, equipped to take, over, to take over that LeGarrette Blunt role. The Boston Globes reporter, Mike Reese, confirms that Gillisley has the uh, inside track to starting for the Patriots. So in 2016, Gillisley had a great year with the Bills, right? Fantasy RB 28 in standard, 34 in PPR, despite seeing the 41st most carries and having the 80th most receptions among running backs. So he was ridiculously efficient and he found pay dirt at a crazy rate, which obviously you say regression, but now he's in the Patriots offense, so is there really gonna be? So among backs with at least 100 carries, Gillisley led all running backs in fantasy points per opportunity, which is carries and uh, routes. Now it's a really small sample size. He doesn't have a lot of carries in his career. It's only like 100, let me say 154. His yards per carry is 5.61. Take that with a grain of salt. I hate basing things off a of small sample size, but it's good to see nonetheless. But as I said, the obvious upside here comes from LeGarrette Blunt now being in Philly, right? LeGarrette Blunt led, the, uh, led all NFL running backs in carries inside the red zone with 68, carries inside the 10 with 42, and carries inside the five with 24. That's so much opportunity to get into the end zone. And he was second overall in the NFL in carries with 299. The best part about it is Blunt saw so many carries there and that's where Gillisley was so good last year. He had six carries inside the five yard line last year, Gillisley did, turned all six of them into touchdowns. And I think this is a huge reason why the Patriots went out and signed him. There's no way I'm going to sit here and say is going to get 300 carries. I mean, who, who knows in that offense? But even if, um, obviously, Rex Burkhead is there. James White and Deion Lewis are strictly pass, pass catchers. Carries sprinkled in. But Rex Burkhead is there. I would have, Rex Burkhead would have been a huge sleeper of mine had Gillisley not been signed. Say you split that 300 carries, right? Let Gillisley take two-thirds of that. 200 carries, 
Burkhead can have 100 carries. Or even if you go 180, 120, something like that. That's realistic. The, the Patriots were the sixth heaviest run team last year in the NFL in terms of percentage. They ran the ball in like 44% of their plays. Sixth heaviest. So Gillisley getting a lot of carries with that yards per carry average plus the amount of goal line opportunities he's going to get is, is a steal with where he's going. Gillisley is only 26 years old. He's entering the prime of his career. The Patriots see something real good in him. And I wouldn't be surprised if, surprised if he exploded this year and had a huge season. They, they added Brandon Cooks. They replaced Bennett with Dwayne Allen. So this, this offense is obviously going to continue to just dominate opponents. And it's going to have really run-friendly game scripts. So they're going to be leading a lot. Look at their division. The Jets, the Dolphins, the Bills. I don't want to hear about, you know, Dolphins and Bills giving them a run for their money. You see what I'm saying? They're going to be leading a lot, which is perfect game script for Gillisley to get 18, 20 carries on a on a given day. The Football Outsiders and Pro Football Focus ranked their offensive line in the top 10. You know, there's just really, really no holes you can poke into this argument other than like you believing in Rex Burkhead's talent and that he's going to take a ton of carries from Gillisley, which I don't believe. They might split it, but I still think Gillisley gets a large majority, 175 to 200 carries. Very effective. A ton of, I can't like emphasize enough how good he was near the goal line and how much opportunity LeGarrette Blunt got there. I think Gillis is a virtual lock to finish inside the top 20 at, at the running back position, if not higher. And he's getting picked as RB34. So that's sleeper number two for me, big time, easy. I'm rolling right to the third sleeper. Since we just talked about him, let's hit him. LeGarrette Blunt out in Philly. ADP of 123, running back 43. For a starting running back in the NFL, that's absurd. He was RB7 in fantasy last year, and now he drops to RB43, only in America. Here's the point to be made. Ryan Matthews is oddly still on the Philly roster, but almost every beat reporter said they expect him to be cut once he's fully healthy. I don't know why that's a thing, but Ryan Matthews out of the picture. LeGarrette Blunt is supposed to take over that role. I mean, it, wouldn't, it makes no sense if he didn't. He'll be the early down back and the goal line guy there. Now, Matthews only played in 13 games, he had 155 carries, which is about 12 carries a game. It's not a huge workload. Obviously, LeGarrette Blount had 300 carries last year. His workload is going to be much smaller in Philly, given the other weapons they have in the backfield, and the game scripts are going to be different than the Patriots had last year. But what intrigues me is where Ryan Matthews got those carries. He had 155 carries overall, and he turned those into eight rushing touchdowns. It's a really good percentage. He had the fourth most carries inside the five yard line of all NFL running backs. He had 16 carries inside the five yard line. If you prorate that 13 games into 16 games, that's 18 and a half carries inside the five yard line. And that's five and a half less than LeGarrette Blunt had last year. So he almost had the amount of opportunity near the end zone that LeGarrette Blunt did. And now LeGarrette Blunt is moving to that offense, which still has a ton of opportunity inside the five, which he should get almost all of. And bam, with Matthews, obviously, you're always worried about the injury concern. With Blunt, he's missed four games over the last four seasons. So, uh, so one game a season. I'm not worried about that, so the opportunity will still be there. And to me, it's, it's the same situation, right? So Matthews, just like Blunt, is not using the passing game. It wouldn't make sense with Darren Sproles and now drafting Danelle Pumphrey. I mean, take this for what it's worth, but running backs coach Deuce Daly said the Eagles plan to use Blunt in the passing game. Uh, he can catch the ball. I would love to get him some screens so we can get that big body going north to south. He'll really scare some people. Uh, I don't know. He's like a bunch of years into his career. They already have pass catching backs. Maybe they'll set up a couple of screens, but I can't imagine him catching more than like 10 balls, 10, 12 balls this season. But, you know, in just 13 games last year, Matthews had 155 carries, 13 receptions, not a high volume workload at all. Still finished as a top 25 fantasy running back. If he could do that, Blunt staying healthy for the entire year could easily do that, right? Now, beat reporters, you know, put the over-under on Blunt's carries. Oh, fuck. Wow, my grandpa started calling me and then I hung up. It's messed up. He don't love me no more. I left my girl back. What was I even saying? So, beat reporters put Blunt's over-under carry total at 170. I think that's being conservative. So Matthew's got 155 in the 13 games. I think Blunt's going to hit between 185 to 200, if not more than that, as their their like workhorse almost. They have Wendell Smallwood, wasn't effective on the ground at all last year, and Darren Sproles and and Danell Pumphrey aren't runners. You know they don't get the handoffs unless it's in a two minute drill or unless you know it's designed plays for them. So Blunt's I think Blunt's going to get a really nice workload. In Philly. They added Torrey Smith, they added Alshon Jeffrey, they should have a healthy Zach Ertz, Jordan Matthews. They have a lot of weapons. The offense should run pretty smoothly, and I think they'll have a lot of 
friendly run scripts throughout the games, and I, and I think they'll have as just as many scoring opportunities as Matthews had last year, Blunt will have this year, if not more. So I guess my major point here is, yeah, obviously Blunt's volume is going to dip going to the Patriots, to the Eagles, but the opportunity where he made his money wasn't as much of a crazy difference as you would think when you look into the numbers. The team's better. He should have a lot of scoring opportunities. For a starting running back, to, you can draft him in the 11th round. It's, it's crazy. He should get 12 to 14, 12 to 15 carries a game, all the goal line opportunities that they have. So, you know, I love Blunt, so... That's my take on that. So we had Danny Woodhead, Mike Gillisley, LeGarrette Blunt, three guys going after pick 80 that have incredible value, incredible opportunity. I think we're just gonna kill it this year in fantasy. As always, I do a couple honorable mentions, guys that I've either covered, so I didn't wanna cover again, or guys that are going too early, that I don't wanna call them sleepers, but are still definitely undervalued. Um, that would be Marshawn Lynch, Spencer Ware, Amir Abdullah, and Blal Powell. I touched on in my breakout candidate video. Joe Mixon, Frank Gore, Dalvin Cook, Darren Sproles. Those are my honorable mentions. I want to know who are a few guys that I didn't just cover that you like for a running back breakout this year. Or you like as a sleeper, you like undervalued, something like that. Comment below. Let me know what you think about that. And lastly, I'm going to sell myself one more time. If you are looking for, ooh, what are those papers? A dad hat for the summer. Big Dog's got to eat. Got them in production. We got four colors. We got black, pink, Blue, really simple, really minimal. Dad hats with the with the logo on. I got a beige one too. I don't know where it went, but four colors coming in stock. Should be hitting you the first week of July if you're interested. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoyed. Please give it that thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Love you. Peace out. Yeah, another one. Yeah, yeah. We the best music. DJ Khaled. You know I like them special made for me. I call him in the demonstrate for me. Mm -hmm. Still 20k up on everybody, yeah. Cause my little baby ain't for everybody, yeah.